Hi guys and welcome to the next lesson. Now I'd like to talk about percentage-based sizes of elements in Studio as well as positioning them. So this might get a little bit tricky, but believe me, it's worth it because you'll be able to create responsive layouts that scale seamlessly across different devices. So I have an abstract project here with three artboards. Each artboard is 400 by 400 pixels. And inside we have a rectangle that's exactly half of the size. So we have 200 by 200 pixels. I'm going to leave the first one as is in pixels, but the, the second one I'm going to change to percentage uh, base. So this is 50 by 50, and this always inherits from the artboard sizes. So that's why this is the same size, because we have 50% of 400, which is 200, and uh, it stays the same. But it won't stay the same uh, if we begin to scale the artboards. And let me try to scaling the artboards. The third one is exactly the same as the first one, so they, will scale this, um, they won't scale at all. And the second one scales so that this shape is always 50% width and height of the artboard. But also, it always stays pinned to the left top corner. And this is another setting that we can explore. If you select the object, you have this alignment settings. And this by default is set to top left for all the elements that you create. So what we can do instead is we can, for example, center this horizontally and vertically as well. And now if we scale it, it will also change the size because it's basically percentage based as far as the width and height is concerned, but it also stays in the center of the artboard. Now positioning the element to the vertical middle and horizontal center, and by the way, you can change it with uh, those drop downs as well, will let you stick to the percentage values of width and height. But what, what we can also do is, for example, for its vertical position, we can change it so that we can have fixed margins to top. And also, this won't change the percentage values. But also, if we want to pin it to the bottom as well, so that we can have fixed margin from the top and from the bottom, this will force our height to change from percent to pixel based. And this is basically logical and necessary because you can't really say that, oh, I want 50% of the height of the artboard, but then I want to keep 20 pixels or, I don't know, 100 pixels margin from top and bottom. So this won't happen. This just physically can't happen because right now, when you scale the artboard, you'll see that we have those fixed margins and this element scales, but you can't really say whether it's 80% or 70%. So you have to have the height adjusted accordingly. So this is how you do it. And basically, you can stretch it all the way to left and right as well. So this will start scaling from 200 by 200. But if you scale, and let me scale all the artboards, if you scale it, it will obviously change the size. But the margins will stay the same from each uh, corner. So this is quite interesting, but it's just the beginning. Now let's select this guy on the artboard free and let's change the default uh, top left position so that is horizontally centered. And still I'll have this fixed margin from the top. What I want to do is I want to have the fixed offset from the center to the left, for example, like this. So let's say it's 50 pixels. It's far better to go to X position and simply contract those 50 pixels so that it moves to the left. And now if I resize the artboard, you'll see that it stays in the center, but not exactly in the center. So it's always offset by those 50 uh, pixels to the left from the center. And you can go even further if you want to offset it, not by a fixed value, but percentage based, you can do so. And you can, for example, say that I want 10% x value offset. And now if I scale the artboard, it always stays in the center, but the offset from the center is dynamic and percentage based. Now, let me show you one more thing. If you select this element and again, let's pin it to the top left. And now we have fixed margin, but not quite anymore because we can set that this is 10% uh, margin from the left hand side and also for the top will uh, stick to 10%. So this is how you can have fluid margins that will expand based on the artboard size. And this is really close what you can um, achieve with this magic of CSS grid layout or CSS flexbox. So this is really amazing. And to be honest, you can't really do it in Sketch. 
and that's simply because uh, Sketch mm, offers you mm, percentages in the input fields. However, those percentage values are automatically calculated to pixels. So you, you have fewer options, exactly half of the options that you have here in Studio. OK, so you've already learned that uh, the percentage-based values are based on the artboard size. Now, there's one exception to this. Let's uh, stick to the uh, pixel width and height and also Y and um, X position. And let's create a component out of this rectangle. So I press Command K and I uh, create a component. Now, inside the component, let's press O and create an oval. I'm going to change the color of an oval and also change the width and height so that we have percentage-based width and height. So let's say I want 60% width and 60% height, like so. And let's also position it in the center. And now let's get back to the uh, main artboard and try to scale the artboard. So as you'll see, scaling the artboard doesn't affect the size of uh, this oval. This is simply because now it inherits uh, the sizes from its parent. So this is basically the component size. And this will be accordingly to the width and height of the component. So if we have 200 by 200, we'll have uh, some base size of the oval. And now we can adjust the size of a component so that it will change with the size of the oval. And we can obviously distort it as well. And also, if you go to uh, the master and edit it and make sure that it's positioned in the middle and uh, in the center horizontally, you can get back and you can have nice results with this component scaling and the contents of the component scaling accordingly. As you can see, if I scale the component, also we have a kind of a bug here. But this not this is not exactly a bug. If you add the master, you'll see that the rectangle here is set to be centered horizontally, not stretch across all the edges. So we have to stretch it, or just basically say that it's 100 by 100. And now you see that we can scale this, and uh, it works really fine. So now we can even push it further. So let's get back to the size of 200 by 200 for this element. And also, I want to scale down the artboard to the original 400 by 400 and select and put it in the center. And now if you set the width and height percentage based for the component, you will have double per percentages. So this uh, oval is scaled within the component and the component itself it is scaled within the artboard. So this is really cool. We can also position it uh, to the center, vertically and horizontally. And now scaling the artboard will scale this element, but the oval inside will scale in quite different proportions. So this is starting to be interesting, but let's not stop here. And what I'd like to do is just duplicate the artboard too. Now, if you stretch this new artboard, you'll see that this guy is expanding with the artboard. And this is simply because it has fluid width and height. So if you want to change it back to pixels, it's as easy as right-clicking inside of this label and changing into pixels. So this is quite a smart trick, and you can always apply new settings. This will calculate the size and will let you go back to pixels or percentages. So now let's expand this as well as uh, the artboard. I want to make it slightly higher. Now let's duplicate option, duplicate this shape and make two more shapes like this. So if you are dealing with responsive layouts, usually you have those kinds of blocks and you want to position them on the artboard. Then you want to scale the artboard and you want those elements to scale accordingly. So this is fairly easy if you apply those settings and also fluid widths and heights. But what if you have multiple items on the artboard and you have a group structure, how it works? Well, if you uh, select all the elements and group them uh, together, you'll see that if you uh, want to change the size of the artboard, well, the settings that you set for a group here will apply to all the elements inside. So if I try to stretch this very group and let me do it like this, all the elements will stretch. This is not really, you know, fancy way. So let me now scale the group and you see that the group itself scales so that all the elements change its change their size. And uh, you see uh, for the individual element that the group settings that I applied for this group are also applied to individual items. And this is why. So let me change it. And for example, let me 
do it like this so that I can pin it to the bottom right and this one maybe let's pin it to the bottom left so will this work if I scale the artboard yes it works so it's pretty cool so the way it works is those elements stays pinned but also their size stays fixed and if I select the group itself and I try to change the size you'll see that it only partly works because they might stay pinned but also they change their dimensions so the thing is you can't have both you can't have uh, those settings applied to the individual items like I did and also to the group now it's grayed out if you start to apply those settings to a whole group those things will inherit those settings and they are overwritten so in order to change this behavior and have the group that is fully flexible you have to select it and in the properties change it so that it's no longer a group but it's a container so let's switch to container and as you see some coordinates also changed but this basically allows you to have uh, different options for the whole container so that I can for example position it uh, in the center and in the middle vertically and also different settings applied to individual items so this might for example stretch like so and this is pinned to the bottom left as well as this is pinned to the bottom right so now when I scale the artboard this will work as expected because it's in the center but if I scale the individual group as you see those settings are applied and uh, this changes so if you change it to container let's sum it up you can change those settings individually for the entire container and then override those settings for each element that's within uh, the container and if you stick to the group you will always have the settings applied either to the elements or the group itself but the default behavior of the group will be that it stretches the content when you try to resize it so in most cases you'd like to have containers instead of the groups for responsive design and this is simply because containers are much more flexible because you can apply different settings and the container itself it's like a mini artboard inside of an artboard so it can scale with the respect of those settings applied to individual elements so you can have multiple containers and apply those settings to position them within the artboard itself but then inside of those containers you also have different settings for the layers so yeah that's it I know that's a lot you have different settings for groups containers for components for alignment as well as you can apply fluid widths and heights and this really adds up but it has to be complicated like so because then it gives you unlimited possibilities in terms of creating responsive layouts either for web or for mobile apps and believe me you'll use all those features now don't be overwhelmed with uh, everything that you see here and let's start with the basics let's apply some of those um, uh, settings that you've learned to our layout in the next lesson